Flix, where we're all about DIY, reviews, and other car related materials. In today's video, we're going to discuss the DDPi Mini 5 dash camera settings, how I have them set up, and which might be best for you. This video is a little long, so head down to the description down below for timestamps to find exactly what you're looking for. If you find this information helpful, please support us by liking the video and subscribing. Enjoy the video. So in order to add your DDPi Mini 5 to your DDPi app, first open the app, go into device on the bottom, add new device. Uh, we're going to do the no screen dash camera because the DDPi Mini 5 does not have a screen. And then it gives us some install instructions. Connect to Wi-Fi. We want to make sure that our Wi-Fi is enabled, VLAN enabled. So we're going to go to set our Wi-Fi to on. Looking for DDPi Mini 5G. Connect to network. The default password is one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and you can change that later in the app so checking for quality of the internet is not going to have internet but we're just looking to get connected okay so now it's initializing the network connecting to camera and there we go So the first thing that comes up when you connect to the camera is the vanishing horizon line. So you want to adjust your camera. I'm going to move it right now so you can see. See I, when I move my camera, this is recording now. So you can see the line move. So you want to pretty much have that line at the end of your horizon or vanishing point, which is the end of the street here. And then the front line, you want it pretty much centered as best as you can uh, with the center of the car. So then you click finish and it'll disappear. If you messed up, you can go back to settings on the top right hand side and uh, go into dash cam installation guide and it gives you an explanation of what to do exactly and then you can turn it on back on. If you go back, the lines reappear and then click finish again. So let's talk about how to play back video and how to download video and or pictures. So if we're in this screen, the camera's on, it's recording, you can hit the capture button and the camera will take a picture. The timeline here on the top, you can drag it and when you stop, at the point you drag it to, it starts playing back the video recording. So anything in yellow is a video recording in parking mode. So I have it to like a time-lapse video. And you could also have uh, on a you know, video playback that's in red, which I have for yesterday. Anything in red is an emergency event, but the camera picks that up through the G sensor. So sometimes you hit a pothole or a bump and uh, it thinks that it's some kind of collision, which I mean, it's good, it's working. However, it just uh, goes into your gallery. It goes into the emergency event to check and it gets saved straight to your phone. So any pictures that were taken or any events that happen go straight onto your phone. So that's how you play back your events and how to download. So let's go back to the camera. We're gonna go to the point that we want to download. So let's say the last five minutes or so, whatever. We have that on our timeline selected. Then we're gonna hit download. Then after we hit download, we have to wait for five seconds minimum of the video clip or until you want to stop the video footage or where you want to stop recording then you hit done once you hit done it goes into your phone's gallery you can share it straight from here okay so the next thing I would like to talk about is app settings and what does each setting mean and what it does to your camera and to the app so the first thing I would like to discuss is the richer data after download which is found here see I'm clicking it and richer data turns on and off this is not live data when you're driving, so you won't see any of that stuff moving. The only thing you'll see really is uh, your date stamp time and miles per hour on the bottom left hand corner. But if you have it on and you download the video with richer data after download, you can see all those sensors, your speed with the gauges working properly and your direction working properly. So next, uh, if we go into settings on the top right hand corner in the app, 
we have the dash cam installation guide which we already talked about then we have h.265 encoding which says recording at higher definition but requires a higher performance smartphone so depending which phone you have i think uh, most people have, you know these days have a pretty the, one of the latest phones so it should work on your phone uh so i'm gonna do a little clip a little demonstration with this on and then with this off just to give you a little demonstration what's the difference in video quality so I'm recording in 4k the top is 0.265 encoding on the bottom is off and uh, it might be difficult to say on YouTube because it's a maximum of 1080p and I am recording in 4k but the quality is definitely better on the top and I would definitely recommend to have it on it might help you capture some detail in a license plate or something if your phone can handle it, of course, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. So that's the difference with the H.265 encoding. I'm going to leave it on. So, oh, look, it gives you a demonstration. It says if video gets stuck while playing, it is recommended to disable this setting. Uh, recording resolution. So I'm at uh, 4K 2160p. Um, the video footage they've used saw of me driving with the H.265 encoding on was all in 4K. And again, the 4K video is on top, the 1080 is on the bottom. 4K is definitely better. Uh, I don't know if YouTube quality of 1080 maximum will give that justice, but uh, 4K is definitely great, except that it you know, takes up more memory so you won't have as much video recording because you only have 64 gigabytes base storage and it's not expandable. So I'm going to put it back to 4K the way I like it. The next couple of settings are kind of self-explanatory. So you got the date watermark. With that off, I do not have anything in the left bottom hand corner. If I turn that on, I have the date watermark. The next setting is if we have show speed. With that off, I don't have speed displaying at the watermark. If I turn that on, now I have speed displayed on the bottom left hand side corner, zero miles per hour. And as you drive, you'll see that uh, increase according to your speed because this camera does connect to the GPS. Then you have speaker volume. So when uh, sometimes your camera can, uh, you know, the welcome sound or initializing sounds, uh, you know, this will control the volume of the actual. Let me see. When I change that, it gives you kind of like a ding for how loud you want the speaker to be. Then a microphone recording. Do you want your voice and everything that's around you, your, the audio recording on the camera? So you can turn that on and off. Voice recording is off. Uh, switching tone off on so like whenever you're switching between parking mode and uh, normal recording do you want a switching tone right ADS intelligent assistant reminder low so uh, what this does is uh, really for people who are maybe a novice driver you might want to turn it on on high and it will give you uh, different alarms the camera will tell you oh that you're uh, not maintaining your lane for example or the car in front of you has taken off like when you're on a red light and you're not paying attention and the car in front of you starts driving off the camera will tell you hey the car in front of you drove off so it's time to go but uh this could get a little annoying so I'm, i like to keep that off but this could be really good for somebody who's just starting out driving uh next camera setting capture video clips when taking a photo so uh, create related video clips with present length when taking a photo. So if you take, uh, if you go back to your camera and you hit capture, it took a picture, but it also created a short clip that is uh, going to auto download to your phone. Next one, uh, adjust collision sensitivity. So maybe this uh, you would want to adjust uh, depending of how bumpy your roads are so like uh, I showed you a couple of the emergency events before and like when I hit a big pothole or bump my camera's G sensor will recognize that as a type of collision and it takes a picture and saves an emergency uh, clip automatically to my phone but uh, you never know uh, you know the impact 
uh, for example, when you're parked, how hard somebody might hit your car. So I like to keep that on low just in case, uh, you know, so you can capture any little, you know, sensitivity in the G sensor so you can capture everything because you never know how hard your car might get hit if you have it on, let's say, high setting and, you know, your car gets dinged, but uh, it wasn't hard enough for the camera to pick that up. All right, so I'll keep that on low and if it gives me, you know, some uh, fake emergency events because of some potholes, big deal, right? Next, um, after a vehicle is turned off, what do you want the camera to do? So in order to get parking mode, you want to shrink the video. If you have ordinary video selected, the camera will just be in normal recording uh, it does not compress the video and therefore you're losing a lot of uh, You're gonna override the memory on your camera because it takes a lot more memory for ordinary recording than shrinking the video So it will if you shrink the video the camera will actually turn red and go into a parking mode Which I'll show you right now Okay, so I have the setting for after exiting the vehicle and shrink video So if I turn off my car goes into regular parking mode with shrinking the video compressing it and saving space and ordinary video will be normal recording or dormancy where your camera won't record at all it'll be in standby mode and it will wake up based on the G sensor so if you smack the camera uh, in dormancy mode right or somebody hits your car in dormancy mode while you're parked the camera will start recording it'll take the picture so those are the differences so now I have that setting in dormancy mode. So I'm gonna turn off my car. Take out the key. Camera turns off. But if something does happen, for example, if uh, you know your G sensor senses that there's been a hit or impact collision, so I'm gonna simulate that by hitting the camera. And let's see if anything happens. Oh, there we go. Hello, ding ding pie. Hello, that's a weird sound. So it goes into parking mode and then uh, it goes into normal recording after it goes from parking mode. Here we go, normal GPS recording. GPS locate succeed. Located the GPS. So yeah, that's how that works. So the next setting on your camera is you have the video duration selection. Device enters standby mode to protect your car battery after the vehicle is turned off for a selected time. So I have it selected for 24 hours and you can set it to whatever type that you want or feel comfortable with. If uh, you have a bad battery or an old battery, you might want to select a lower time because it won't last 24 hours because your battery's voltage will drop in six hours or an hour depending on the condition of your battery. Which brings us into the next setting, vehicle battery protection. I have selected the middle or 12 volts so if my car battery drops below 12 volts my camera will automatically shut off to prevent from draining the battery where I won't be able to start the car and you can select uh, high 12.4 volts if your battery is pretty new and you feel comfortable with that and or low if uh, you know you want to run your camera for as long as possible 11.8 volts is still enough to start your car so you'll be safe either way but I like to run it in the middle. Right, the next setting is the Wi-Fi name. So you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, you can also change the dash cam password so nobody can connect to your camera who knows the default password, of course. And then you have data management. So you have 64 gigabyte base storage on the Mini 5. It does not take an external memory card. At 64 gigabytes, but you have 57.4 capacity due to system taking up some space. So the memory card will pretty much manage itself because uh, old videos get overwritten when the memory is full if you didn't save it or if it was not an emergency event. So the only thing that can kind of clutter up your uh, memory or storage is emergency events that we spoke about. So if uh, you have some false ones, uh, just remember to erase them once in a while because that can really add up. So that concludes the camera settings. Now if we go into me, we can go through some app settings itself, not on the camera, but on the app. So if we go in there, we will have uh, automatically download event image and download event video. So that would automatically go into your phone, any emergency events. 
then you have to change your language, time format, measuring unit, where depending of uh, if you're in Europe or somewhere else in the world, you might be using the metric system, or if you're in the United States, you could be using the imperial system, so select which one works best for you. So that concludes the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. We're trying to hit our goal of 1000 subscribers and it could be a little bit difficult in the beginning. So your support would be greatly, greatly appreciated. If you have any questions at all, again, put them in the comments and I'll answer all of your questions. Take care.